Good morning, children. How are you all? I think you all are fit and fine. Children, in my today's EVS lesson, I will discuss with you about lesson 20. The name of the lesson is Birth of a Nation. At the beginning of the lesson, children, I will discuss with you about the Constitution of India. The Constitution of India is the supreme law of India. A country needs certain rules which are called laws. These laws are contained in the Constitution of India. This document lays down the procedures, powers and duties of government institutions and sets out fundamental rights, directive principles and the duties of citizens. It is the Longest written constitution of the world. That means children, constitution means the set of laws to proceed the functionality of a country smoothly. A country needs certain rules. Those rules are called the constitution. These laws and rules are contained in the constitution of India. Children, in 1946, a special assembly was constituted, which was called Constituent Assembly. The Constituent Assembly was responsible for creating a constitution according laws for the people of independent India. People from all walks of life such as engineers, doctors, lawyers, businessmen, farmers, teachers and many others were part of the constituent assembly. A draft committee was formed to finalize the constitution based on the Discussions in the Constituent Assembly. Children, this is the image of Dr. B. R. B. R. Ambedkar. He is the father of Indian Constitution. B. R. Ambedkar was the chairman of the drafting committee. It took nearly three years to complete writing the Indian constitution. The Indian constitution was adopted by the constituent assembly on 26th November 1949 and came into force on 26 January 1950. For this reason, we celebrate 
Republic Day on 26 January every year. Look at the image children. Children, this is our Parliament House. Situated in Delhi. Some important parts of the Indian Constitution are the preamble, the directive principles of state policy, the fundamental rights and the fundamental duties. The Preamble to the Indian Constitution The word preamble means an introduction. It is a brief introductory statement that sets out guidelines which guides the people of the country. The hopes and the aspiration of the people are described in it. So, what is actually the preamble? Preamble means the introductory or the brief statement, brief introductory statement or the sets of guidelines about the Indian constitution which guides the people of India. The four important words of our preamble are sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic, republic. Once again, I am repeating the four important words of our preamble. They are sovereign, Socialist, Secular, Democratic, Republic. Children, this is one more view of Indian Parliament House. Now, I will come to the point where it is described being about the four points. They are sovereign, socialist, secular and democratic republic. First, sovereign. India is an independent country. It is free to conduct its own affair, both internal as well as external. So, sovereign means India is an independent country. Next, socialist. Meaning of socialist is the wealth of the country should be shared by all Indian people. It aims to end profit, poverty, ignorance, Diseases and inequality of opportunity. So, what is the core meaning of socialist? The core meaning of socialist is the wealth of the country should be shared by all Indian people. Now I am coming to the point secular. There is no official religion. Also, there is no difference of religion. Secularism means all are equal in front of any, in front of religion. There is no official religion, no official religion as well as there is no difference of religion. Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism, 
Christianity and Islam are equally respected. All the citizens of India are allowed to practice religion of their choice. Now coming to the point, democratic republic or republica. The meaning of a democratic, democratic republic is government elected by the people called democracy. So what is the meaning of democracy? The meaning of democracy is government elected by the people of India where a king or queen will not be the head of the country. President will be the head of the country in India. See children, this is one more beautiful view of our Indian Parliament House. Now, I will discuss with you about directive principles of state policy. What is directive principles of state policy? These principles emphasizes that the state shall try to promote welfare of people by providing them basic facilities like shelter, food and clothing. So, what is mentioned in the directive principles of state policy? It describes that the state shall try to promote welfare of the people. How the state will provide welfare to its people? It will provide the welfare of the people by providing them basic facilities like shelter, food and clothing. The constitution has guidelines or instructions to help governments. These are only guidelines, not laws. That means whatever described in the directive policies of state, po direct, sorry children, very sorry, directive principles of state policy are only the guidelines. They are not laws. They help governments to decide what their policy should be. B. Now children, I will define the points mentioned under directive principles of state policy. Number one, ensure work for everyone. So the government has to ensure work for each and every citizen. Number two, provide Free and compulsory education for all children up to 14 years of age. So next point is to provide free and compulsory education for all children up to 14 years of age. No one is exploited on the basis of wealth, religion or caste. Lastly, provide proper living conditions of the people. So, what is the last point? Each and every citizen must get a pro proper living condition inside a country. Now I am mean, coming to the point that is fundamental rights. 
constitution of india guaranteed some fundamental essential rights to the citizen of india these rights are fundamental because of two reasons why they are fundamental number 1 first these are mentioned in the constitution they are fundamental because these are mentioned in the constitution and number 2 the second one these are justiciable that means they are enforceable through courts now one by one i will mention the fundamental rights number 1 the rights or rights to equality that means the constitution guarantees that all citizens will be equal before the law the constitution guarantees that all citizens will be equal below sorry before the law means all are equal in front of law it means that everyone will be equally protected by the laws of the country there should be no discrimination against a citizen on the basis of religion race caste sex or place of birth untouchability is abolished and practiced and practicing it is forbidden that means no one will practice the act of untouchability it will be abolished number 2 right to freedom freedom of speech and expression freedom to move freely throughout the territory of india freedom to reside and settle in any part of india number 3 right against exploitation what is the meaning of that meaning is no child below the age of 14 years shall be employed to work in any factory or mine or engaged in any other hazardous employment no one can force people to work without payment or for very little payment now coming to the fourth point right to freedom of religion citizens are free to follow any religion and to worship they the way they like citizens are free to follow any religion and to worship the way they like they are also free to talk about their religion number 5 cultural and educational rights every community has the right to preserve protect and develop its own culture culture means a community's traditional way of doing things their dress and food their art music dance and literature their language and their religion interests of citizen belonging 
to minority groups including their rights to set up schools and colleges other colleges are protected a minority group is a small group within a larger group again i am repeating this point interests of citizens belong to minority group groups including their rights to set up schools and colleges are protected a minority group is a small groups within a larger group now number 6 right to constitutional remedies it provides legal remedies for the protection of our fundamental rights these rights allow citizens to go to court if any of the other fundamental rights are being disregarded or taken away to any manner that means if any way our fundamental rights are violated citizens can go to court and ask for the justice here remedy means a way to improve a difficult situation see children the image of our parliament uh, parliament house during night now i will come to the point fundamental duties fundamental duties are the duties of indian citizens towards their countries some of them are number 1 to respect the constitution the national flag and the national anthem to promote harmony and the spirit of common brotherhood amongst all the people of india number 3 to safeguard public property and to avoid violence to protect and improve the natural environments including forests lakes leave rivers and wildlife lastly to value and preserve the rich heritage of our culture last point we have reached to the last point of this topic that is form of government in india our constitution has provided for a government at the center and each state it has also provided independent judiciary and governing for villages and small towns okay children so now i will discuss with you about this we have a parliamentary form of government in india where prime minister along with the ministers heads and rules the country so which form of government we are having we are having a parliamentary form of government where 
प्राइम मिनिस्टर एलोंग विद द मिनिस्टर्स हेड्स एंड रूल्स द कंट्री द प्रेसिडेंट इज द हेड ऑफ द कंट्री ओके बेटा नाउ द टू हाउसेज ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट आर राज्य सभा एंड द लोकसभा both the president and prime minister are helped by the two houses to form policies for the welfare of the people so who help the president and the prime minister the people or the member of the two houses help the president and the prime minister to form the policies for the welfare of the people the union government make laws for the whole country with a supreme court helping it along with this a village panchayat or a gram panchayat looks after the need of the people living in village like providing schools water draining facilities and many other a municipal committee or municipal corporation looks the needs of the people living in the cities by providing them proper roads electricity water transport etc so there are two parts one is village panchayat who looks after the need of the village people and another is the municipal municipal corporation or municipal committee who or it looks after the needs of the people who resides in the town or cities by providing them proper roads electricity water transport etc we also have some national symbols which are shared by the whole nation they are the national flag the national anthem the national emblem the national animal fruit flower bird tree river etc all these bind us together and remind us what it remind us about that we all are one and we all are united within india okay children so this much is for today's session if you are having any doubts any confusion regarding the lesson when we will meet with each other in the online session just clear all the doubts with me beta and i will also explain the lesson with you over there so now this is the time to say you goodbye take care children